In this video, I'm going to be telling you how I got in my marathon wearing these. What is up, everybody, and welcome back to 40 Runs and Running Shoe HQ here in the UK. Where are you in the world? Let me know in the comments. And also, before we do anything else, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Okay, people, so if you've been living in a shed or the doghouse like Simon has been, you wouldn't have known, but I've just run a marathon. Yeah, I'll be telling everyone. Uh, but we was over in Amsterdam, we ran a marathon, and um, yeah, it wasn't quick, and I asked you to define quick. Um, it was probably quick in some people's um, outlooks in life, and I appreciate that, but for me, it wasn't a particularly quick marathon. Um, but there was a reason why I didn't go quick, because I had COVID and then I had a cold and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, digress. The reason I want to talk to you about it is because I ran the marathon in these, the Adios Pro, Adi Zero Pro, whatever they're called, Pro 3. Now, if you've been following it along to the channel, uh, I've been a big fan of the Alpha Fly. I've worn the Alpha Fly for most of um, the last couple of years in terms of marathons, and I was going to wear the Alpha Fly 2 for this year's marathon. But because I switched um, my sort of outlook on what I was going to be running, um, again, watch the videos, but basically I was pacing Simon as far as I could into the race at 3.42 pace, which we did, I think I got him to 20 miles at that pace. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't hanging about. Um, but I opted to go for the Adios Pro 3 over the Alpha Fly. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons why that was. Firstly, I ran a half marathon, um, a couple of half marathons, in okay time in these, and I felt comfortable um, at the sort of pace that I would be going. It was a little bit slower, um, but I was happy with the pace that I was keeping in the shoe at those sort of distances. So I felt comfortable and confident in the ability of the shoe. I also really liked the balance of the shoe. Now, what do you mean by balance? I like, I, the Alpha Fly can become a little bit unstable at that slower speed, and I'm a big fan of the Alpha Fly people, but I just like the balance between heel and toe. Because in a marathon, you, you, you know, you're gonna start like guns blazing, and then you're gonna move back as you get more tired. And I liked the balance of the shoe on my foot in terms of how it felt over those sort of longer miles. I also like the upper of the shoe, um, and I like the overall fit of the shoe. I've never had any hot spots, heat spots, blisters, problems with my toes, and all that sort of stuff during uh, the sort of running in this shoe. I also like the outsole of the shoe with the um, good, uh, good shoe, I was going to say, continental rubber. I also like the feeling I get from heel to toe with the Light Strike Pro and the Energy Rods. Um, it's definitely not as snappy as a carbon plate, but I like the propulsion. I get from the shoe. I also like the fit around the heel. Uh, again, not too intrusive. One thing I really don't like is the lacing. I asked Simon, I played around with this lacing for the week before Amsterdam. I was wearing them a couple of times, just literally to play around with the lacing. I finally dialed it in. Um, but uh, during the Amsterdam marathon, there was a guy on the left-hand side. I stopped, um, again, watch the end of the video, but I stopped and I said to the to the geezer, hold the camera for a sec, and I, and I, lo I loosened my right foot because it was still not 100%. So I was still even in the later stages of the race playing around with my lacing. But the reason, the reason the shoe for me did so well is because I was just able to hold all the different variations of pace. And that was the thing, you know, we went out at 3.42 pace and we was, we was going along and it felt good and it felt not effortless in any shape or form, but I wasn't worrying about the shoes on my feet. I, w I was getting enough of a, a decent feedback from the shoe to help me go forward. I wasn't having to, you know, worry about falling over or that it was too firm or anything like that. I was getting a nice bit of propulsion. I was getting a nice bit of cushion. I was getting that forward motion from the shoe. And that's the biggest compliment I think I can give the Adidas uh, Adi Zero Pro 3 was in that, in that mixture of pace from going from 3.42 to finishing in, I think, 4.0 something, 4.05, 4.06, something like that, whatever it was, uh, we was walking at the end to obviously look after Simon. But the shoe was able to cope with all of that. And it wasn't unbalanced. It wasn't, you know, a, an issue in any shape or form when I was at those slower paces. So I dropped down to like 9.40 pace waiting for him to catch up. And the shoe was still good at that pace and that's the thing with the shoe and that's why I'm so uh, so pleased I wore it it was just able to give me that versatility through the marathon 
So it's a, a, a big recommendation for me, uh, from me. If you're looking for a marathon shoe um, and you're put off by the Alpha Fly, uh, and I get why you're put off by the Alpha Fly, then I do think the Adidas Adi Zero Pro 3 is a good option to look at. There is a reason why these elites are winning races and coming second in the shoe. It is a fantastic shoe. It's a race day shoe. It's not something you want to train in. It is a race day shoe. Um, and yeah, I think that's probably the best way to end the video. So yeah, I can't recommend it enough, to be honest with you. Don't just stick to your Nike Alpha Flies, people, or, or your Vapor Flies. The, the Adi Zero Pro 3 is a very, very capable shoe for race day.